Assalamu alaikum guys. The Israeli occupation has taken an eerie turn over the last week and seen as the news and entertainment industry favours our Zionist counterparts more, it may seem to some of us that we are alone in this struggle. So I think it's nice to acknowledge and appreciate some people of influence who have shown solidarity to the oppressed in Palestine. Let's start off with the most surprising one, Dua Lipa which I don't think I'd be wrong if I say she is one of the biggest US female singers at this moment in time. So not only did she post Save Sheikh Jarrah Palestine, but she posted a few videos on her story too. Let's move on to supermodel sisters Gigi and Bella Hadid. So Gigi Hadid posts a very surprising message and calls, One cannot advocate for racial equality, LGBT and women's rights, condemn corrupt and abusive regimes and other injustices, yet choose to ignore the Palestinian oppression. It does not add up. You cannot pick and choose whose human rights matter more. Wow, I have to say this was definitely one of the most powerful messages I've seen and very gutsy from her as well. Hope she doesn't get in trouble for it. For those of you that don't know, she is the wife of Zayn Malik. Her sister Bella Hadid goes, Future generations will look back in disbelief and wonder how we allowed the Palestinian suffering to continue for so long. A human tragedy unfolding right in front of our eyes. Politicians stutter neutral words in fear of being reprimanded whilst the world remains silent to avoid offending the wrong people. History has taught us to speak up. You are either on the right side or you are not. It's that simple. <laughs> wow, another banger. Mia Khalifa posted, All I see are crimes against humanity that the United States is funding with an annual 3.8 billion hashtag free Palestine. Boy, she went there. <laughs> I don't think I saw anybody go there, but she went there. Let's move on to DJ Khalid, who's signed to Jay-Z's record label. He posted, sending love and light and prayers to my Palestinian brothers and sisters and everyone around the world. I'm praying for peace and love to the world. Peace and love to everyone. Let's move on to Desportivo Palestino, a football club in Chile. They wore the scarf in solidarity with their brothers and sisters. Uh, those of you that know outside of Palestine, Chile has the most uh, Palestinian population. Let's move on to Faye Khadra, a musician and model. His thing was quite clear. It's not clashes, scuffles and both sides. It's colonialism, apartheid, state-sanctioned violence. The global warming activist Greta Thunberg. Devastating to follow the developments in Jerusalem and Gaza. Hashtag save Sheikh Jarrah. <laughs> She did get in a lot of trouble for that, so she had to do another post in which she said, To be crystal clear, I am not against Israel or Palestine. Needless to say, I'm against any form of violence or oppression from anyone or any part. And again, it is devastating to follow the developments in Israel and Palestine. Which is quite surprising because she's quite hard hitting when it comes to global warming. This is all wrong. How dare you? It's a shame that she's not as hard hitting against human warming under bombs and uh, the likes. Okay, let's move on to Mark Ruffalo, who played Hulk in The Avengers. He's been quite vocal in the Palestinian cause before as well. He posted 1,500 Palestinians face expulsion in Jerusalem, 200 protesters have been injured, 9 children have been killed, sanctions on South Africa helped free its black people, it's time for sanctions on Israel to free Palestinians. Join the call, hashtag Sheikh Jarrah. Wow, straight to the point and also giving a and supporting a strong solution as well. Yeah, he's not playing about. Yeah, you can tell he's the right guy to play the Hulk. Then we move on to the greatest athlete in MMA, Habib Narmegomedov. Firstly, he posted a chilling Quran ayah and then of course his clear support for Palestine. Then we move on to Malala. Malala is the one who survived the attacks of the Taliban and then was subsequently used by the US government for their propaganda. She posted a neutral message. The violence in Jerusalem, especially against children, is unbearable. This long conflict has cost many children their lives and their futures. Leaders must act immediately. There is no peace when children and civilians are not safe. Now, social media was not happy with this, so uh, they edited it for her. The 
terrorism in Jerusalem against Muslims is unbearable. This long oppression has cost many Muslims their lives and their futures. Leaders must act immediately. There is no peace when innocent civilians are not safe. Let's move on to Liverpool's Muhammad Salah. He posted a message. So first he posted a picture of himself in front of the Dome of the Rock. And then he says, I'm calling on all the world leaders, including on the Prime Minister of the country that has been my home for the past four years to do everything in their power to make sure the violence and killing of innocent people stops immediately. Enough is enough. I think people who know him know what he's talking about, but social media did also point out that there's absolutely no mention of Palestine there. Uh, let's move on to Arsenal player Mohamed El Nenwi. He says, my heart and soul and my support for you, Palestine. Yeah, Palestinian lives matter. And you've got some pictures there. Then we move on to Manchester City's Riyad Mahrez. He did hashtag Palestine, hashtag save Sheikh Jarrah. Then we got Liverpool's Sadio Mane, who had free Palestine and then says heartbreaking. Then we had bass player and vocalist of the group Pink Floyd. I mean, this guy did not hold back. Sheikh Jarrah, Jerusalem. What? What? And Biden is still going, oh, I support Israel in anything. To oh, what? You support them in this genocidal removal of people from their homes? How would you like it, Joe Biden? You're sitting at home. There, that's your home. It's where your family have lived for hundreds of years. And some arsehole comes along and goes, Oi, that's ours. I'm a settler. I'm going to take your house from you. You can, I don't care what you do, die. That would be the very best thing. I mean, it is inconscionable, unbelievable. Then we have 300 and Game of Thrones actress Lena Headey, who posted a very direct and hard hitting message. Yeah, she's. She's a Hollywood actress, and for her to do that, I was quite surprised. Let's have a read. One law for chaos and another law for peace. Hashtag Sheikh Jarrah. And then on, in the picture, it says Zionist Israeli apartheid. And then she says, read, digest, educate, and share and speak up. Link in the bio to sign the petition. Over 1,500 Palestinians from neighborhoods in Jerusalem are facing threat of forced displacement and home demolitions by Israeli authorities. Children make up a large percentage of the families threatened with homelessness. And of course, her post goes on. We also had comedian Paul Chowdhury who reshared a video by Sean King, who's an activist. And we also had social media comedians, Anwar Jibawi and Adam, who, who have very big followings on Instagram and, and YouTube. They posted messages of solidarity too. You also had YouTuber Faze Rug, as well as UK rapper Crept from the duo Crept and Conan. Then we had comedian Trevor Noah, who started off very neutral. And then because obviously he's on a Comedy Central, which is a big platform, and he has to play the game a little bit. I was quite disappointed at the start, but then after three minutes, that's when he got to the point. The part where we say who's good and who's bad and who started, let's, let's step away from that and instead ask a different question. Instead, let's look at who's dead and who's alive this week. In Gaza, Israeli airstrikes have reportedly killed 28 people, including 10 children. Over 150 people have been wounded. In Israel, Hamas rockets have killed two people. And this exchange of fire comes after the Israeli assault in and around the Al-Aqsa Mosque that left more than 600 Palestinian protesters, worshippers, and civilians wounded. Like set aside motives and intentions and just look at technology, technology alone. Israel has one of the most powerful militaries in the world. They can crush Gaza like that. Not to mention one of the most advanced defense systems in the world. You shoot a rocket at them, it's probably not going to do anything to them because of their defense system, right? They've got a giant Mutombo in the sky just knocking them down. And I know, I know that this is contentious and I know that people are gonna hate me for this, but I just wanna ask an honest question here. If you are in a fight where the other person cannot beat you, how hard should you retaliate when they try to hurt you? And I'm sure, guys, there are many, many more that I've missed. 
so please let me know in the description because yeah I definitely think these people should be acknowledged and uh, appreciated especially considering how difficult it is um, and risky it is for a person's career to openly speak out uh, about these things let's leave it there until next time assalamu alaikum